One of the many joys of any Rugby World Cup is watching the Pacific Nations on show and the team in form from that area of the world now is Fiji and the most likely to have success in this tournament. Today on Bish Rugby we're going to be previewing the Flying Fijians, seeing how they will do in Pool D. We're going to look at style of play, key players, the man in charge, recent results and history of Rugby World Cup and lots more. So make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video. Let's get into it. So Fiji have been at every single Rugby World Cup except for 1995, where they didn't qualify for it. In 1987, they managed to get to the quarterfinals, losing against France. But then heading through then, 1999, 1991 as well, pool stages, 2003 was pool stages. But their greatest victory possibly in the history of Fijian rugby came in 2007 when they beat Wales, my team, <laughs> they beat them. Out in France, an incredible match to get through to the quarterfinals. And that was an incredible match, and they deservedly won. And why did they win? Well, because they played their style of rugby and drew Wales into their style of play, which we'll get onto later in the video when we look at their style of play. They then went on to lose in the quarterfinals against South Africa in that tournament, but showed the world how to play rugby properly. In 2011 and 2015, it's the same old story, pool stages for the Fijians. So in 2019, they've had a mixed bag of results, but they haven't really played a tier one nation, to be honest, this year. So, so far, they've played against Japan, which they lost 34-21, the Japanese winning at that one on Japanese soil. They then thrashed Canada quite comfortably, 38-13, at home in Suva. They then beat their Pacific Island brothers in Samoa, 10 points to 3. And then they beat Tonga, 29 points to 19. But one of the biggest victories of the past three years or so is when they beat, of course, the French in Paris 21 of 14 for their first ever victory against the French. A fantastic game and deservedly so. Although fans were poor on the day, Fiji deserved to win. Now it's time to have a look at how are Fiji going to play. Let's do some analysis. We all know the way Fiji want to play, attacking rugby, offloading, keeping the ball alive. But Fiji have gone through an interesting phase in the way that they play and an interesting process in the way that they play. The head coach, John McKee, came in and noticed that maybe they needed to add a little bit more structure to their side. We saw this with Samoa when they got wins against Australia, against Wales and against Scotland. They tried this out for a few months, but it didn't really work. And John McKee took inspiration from the Fiji 7 side which really looked at how to uh, keep the ball alive at all costs offloading not going down to ground uh, and going into contact all that much this really benefited the side because it enabled them to play heads up rugby and the defense didn't have time to reset itself to get into position and Fiji play best when it's a messy game it's a scrappy game that's when they play best so John McKee changed things up again and they went back to basics as Ben Ryan did with the seven side and this is what they will tend to do in this Rugby World Cup they will look to draw teams into their style of play into the messy game and if they can do that to the likes of Australia and Wales especially without structure those teams will struggle and Fiji will thrive in that so that will be the game plan from Fiji their set piece has certainly improved their scrum their line out that is something that they have worked on but they are going to rely on the offloading, on the attacking players, but they do have big ball carriers as well, which they will use, and they will use them to get over the gain line. Fly half Ben Volavola is a fantastic player, plays for Racing 92 in France, and he's dating the girl who acts in the Hunger Games as well. But he will, um, he will be the catalyst at 10. He isn't the most physical presence but he certainly is good with ball in hand running at the defense and will free up the bigger players in his side so fiji looking to throw the ball out from the back and also uh, to get over the gain line but not go into contact all that much so fiji will certainly be entertaining a rugby world cup 2019 so the man in charge of the Fiji side is John McKee, the New Zealand-born coach. He's coached in Ireland, he's coached in Australia and around the Pacific nations as well in various roles. Vastly experienced, been in the job since 2014 and as we spoke has really seen a development in trying to place some different styles of rugby in Fiji. It's going to be interesting to see how he does. He's had time with this team, so let's see how he does.
The key player for Fiji will be their log, Leone Nakawa, one of the best offloaders in the world. Some of the insane offloads that he pulls off manages to free up the backs in at the side who are able to throw the ball about and run at defence. Teams will try and tackle him high to stop him from doing this, but he seems to manage to wriggle his arms out and offload it to a supporting teammate. He'll be key for the side if they are to progress out of this group. He's a winning mentality of a player by winning gold at the Olympics in 2016 in Brazil with the Fiji 7 side playing a star role. His offloading skills, as I said, will give the ability to the backs to be able to play with attacking style and also it will draw in defenders to him because they know how important, how integral he is to that Fijian side. So keep your eyes out on Leona Nakarawa. He's certainly one to watch. So the Flying Fijians are in Pool D alongside Wales, Australia, Georgia and Uruguay. A tough pool, that's for sure. Fiji seems to get drawn against Wales a lot in pool stages. So first of all, they will play Australia, then they'll play Uruguay, then they'll play Georgia and finish off with Wales. Looking at the group, you look at two sides and you think they're probably favourites to get out, Australia and Wales. Although both sides have not been in fantastic form recently. Wales lost three of their four Rugby World Cup warm-up matches. How much can you read into that? It's hard to say. Australia, over the past two years, have really struggled, you know, but they did beat the All Blacks but then got thrashed 36-0 the following week against the same side. So it's difficult to say where Australia and Wales are at the minute. Fiji will certainly be targeting that Uruguay and Georgia game as a winnable games, and you'd expect them to certainly beat Uruguay. And they're probably slightly stronger than Georgia at the minute, although Georgia play a very... Um, they play with a very strong set piece and they'll look to play off that, while Fiji, a very contrasting style of play which we've already looked at, that they want to throw the ball about and try different things. But the big game is going to be against Wales, that final game. Now, if Fiji have managed to beat Georgia and have managed to beat Uruguay, which you'd expect them to, and Australia have managed to beat Wales and won their other games, that game will be the deciding game of the pool who goes through. Now, on paper, and personally, I do think Wales have enough to win it, but if Fiji can draw Wales into their game, like they did in 2007, throwing the ball about, trying different things out, offloading with Leona Nakarawa and Ben Volavola's running things at 10, they could certainly cause Wales some problems. They will look to make sure that they keep the ball alive, that Wales can't get easy penalties. That's something Fiji are going to have to be aware of, is discipline. Make sure they're disciplined, especially at the breakdown, where they do stupid things and come in at the side or offside and sometimes start using their heads, really, on what to do and just not communicating with each other enough. But, as I said, if they can get drawn into that open, wide, expansive game, then they certainly could cause an upset here. As I said, I think it's one of their best chances to get out of a group because Australia are not in the best place, Wales are not in the best place, and you'd expect them to beat Georgia and certainly thrash Uruguay. Uruguay are in for a really tough Rugby World Cup. But what are my predictions? Well, I have to be honest, I don't quite think Fiji are going to get out of this group. I think that Australia and Wales will get out, but they will certainly finish third with a win against Georgia and a win against Uruguay, and they could cause a few little scares for Wales and Australia. But they certainly will entertain, and also they seem to be going in the right direction ahead of Rugby World Cup 2023. So there you go, that's my predictions for Fiji and a little preview for you. If you have enjoyed, do subscribe, leave a like on the video. There's a preview of France, South Africa and loads of different videos coming out over the channel over the next few days. So make sure to subscribe and leave your thoughts down below. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy guys, enjoy the Rugby World Cup and peace.